on the 77th episode of Passion and Progress. An amazing creator and great friend of mine that I've had the pleasure of working with for a couple of videos, Alex Gassaway. Alex owns a production company out of Los Angeles, and she's also a YouTuber. And in both of those fields, she's aiming to create a community that creates with purpose. This podcast was recorded about a month or two ago, and since then, Alex has been pumping out some really stellar content and seen some great growth on her channel. And with good reason, she makes some amazing quality content that I think any videographer can learn from. And speaking of creating great videos, you probably want people to find it on YouTube when you publish it. And a great tool for that is today's sponsor, TubeBuddy. Since the beginning of my YouTube career, I've been using TubeBuddy to catapult my videos to the top of search in YouTube. And I can guarantee you that a lot of the views from my most popular videos on my channel can be accredited to being higher in search on YouTube and because of using a tool like TubeBuddy. For those listening and watching, TubeBuddy has a free tier that you can download and install into your browser and type in and see how your keywords rank in search on YouTube. It's hands down one of the best features that I can recommend to anyone. What I try and do when utilizing TubeBuddy is look for keywords that score at 70 or higher in search on YouTube. And for the listeners and watchers of this show, if you want to download TubeBuddy for free, it, it's an amazing software. Just go to TubeBuddy.com forward slash progress. That's TubeBuddy.com forward slash progress. Also, for those that are just watching this on YouTube, as an incentive for people to go listen to the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, any of those podcast platforms, I'm going to include extra segments from our interview that will not be available in the YouTube video, just as a little incentive for people to go listen to the podcast. All right, let's go ahead and hop into the 77th episode of Passion and Progress with one of my great friends and amazing creator creator, Alex Gassaway. What is up, Merce Nation? Javier Mercedes here for yet again another Passion in Progress show, where we talk to inspiring individuals and hopefully through hearing their stories, you too are motivated to go out and pursue your passions as well. And today on the show, we do have quite the creator, Alex Gassaway. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? We are in your humble abode in the <laughs> LA scene. First question, in your videos, you have three things that you always say that your uh, your content is about. Would mm -hmm. you like saying what they are and also why are the th they the three things that drive your content? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I make content about creativity, business, and purpose and intending to help creators combine all three. And those are the three passions that have kind of narrowed down over the last five years. Um, I've always been a creator. I grew up wanting to work in the film industry. I've worked in Hollywood a bit, and I also have kind of a split brain between creativity and business. And then, and then over maybe like maybe the last five years, I've just kind of evolved into this passion for purpose. And and for me, it can mean it can mean different things for a lot of people. But for me, it means impact and and how we can develop impact in the world and help business to empower social impact and social causes and all that all that stuff so it's all it's all how can commerce also improve the world so within like the last couple weeks or months or everything i i know you love creating content what are some examples of that Ooh, weeks and months mm -hmm. i have not been as consistent on mm -hmm. youtube as i would have liked um but actually by the time this is out i will have posted the first episode of a new series that i'm starting which is called collab for a cause um, and I invited some creators in LA to have dinner on the beach and also hand out socks, wet wipes, and granola bars to the homeless population in Venice. Um, so yeah, Collab for a Cause is something that is a culmination of all of my passions into one and showing creators how they can implement purpose and impact into their content as well. And so I'll be taking different creators out on impact experiences to raise awareness or, or do something in service of a cause that they're passionate about. So I'm really excited about that series. Yeah, it sounds awesome. And I would would have liked to see it, but I, I knew from pictures on your IG stories and everything, it looked really mm -hmm. cool. So I'm, uh, I'm anticipating what it's going to be slash like, it's weird recording something that's going to be <laughs> like dropped tomorrow, yeah, by the yeah. way, tomorrow <laughs> at 6am, it will be live. Yeah. Let me just put the, um, I'll put a link to it in the show notes. Uh, 
One of the big things that I love and that I've done with you is the collaboration. That's what you just mentioned. What does it mean to you to collaborate with another creator? Because I think that's like the biggest, I don't want to say like dopamine rush or what, <laughs> whatever it is. It's like you you breed creativity when you're around other people that have those like-minded um, uh, focuses and everything. How does creativity manifest itself in yourself as well as like when it comes with collaboration? I think it's, the most fun part of our jobs is couldn't agree more <laughs> like I, I think we all agree on that and which is why it's so exciting when we all get to get get together because it's such a solo it's such a solo job for the yeah. most part you know unless you're working in a production company with a bunch of other people if you're creating for youtube it's usually a solo endeavor so getting together and collaborating is really fun I actually will kind of spin that back, but getting together in general, right? We're right now we're all here because of Vid Summit. Yeah. It's going to be a blast. We're going to meet a ton of new people and it's going to be really invigorating. And that's one way where we get to just like breathe that creativity, right? And just flow ideas and just talk about the platform and talk about our ideas and all that good stuff. But collaborating like with a specific purpose in mind, I think is something entirely different and gets at least me motivated and excited in a different way because you're actually working on something that you're going to put out together, which I think is a really fun aspect of YouTube. Can you talk about your previous collaborations, like the lightsaber video or anything oh, like that? Yeah. Like, um, I know a lot of production <laughs> went into that. So uh, I guess let's start off with that one. And I think sure. that's one of the great things about your channel and how you incorporate others in your content. Yeah, it's 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 what I what I love to do on the channel. Um, so I made a Star Wars May the 4th video and it was <laughs> Sony versus Canon, which in and of itself was like a dream come true for me to just make a lightsaber video. I'm just a huge Star Wars fan. So that was really fun. Um, but it was a great excuse to just reach out to different creators. And we had, I think, eight different uh, LA based create LA and San Diego based creators out for the shoot one night. We just waited for the sun to go down and we just had a lightsaber battle uh on a on a local university you campus. Said here. That's so nonchalant. <laughs> we just waited for the sun to go down. Turns out we had a lightsaber battle. Yeah, it was just <laughs> casual. Um yeah, so we had I think eight, maybe ten with myself. Um yeah, around ten creators. It was so much fun. And I was just messaging and I was just messaging people leading up to that, just trying to get as many people there as possible, right? Yeah. And it was a blast once we got there. And then it was also a great opportunity for me to reach out. I had this section where um, there were YouTubers around the globe that were participating in this lightsaber battle or this this like phenomenon that was happening. And so I got to reach out with pe to people that weren't in L.A. and get to talk to them and have them send in clips and just make it a really fun, really fun video to be a part of, hopefully. Go into your Casey video then. Um, with, with that, I know uh, that was a huge endeavor. Can you talk to it from the regard of a premium piece of content versus what you were doing daily. Cause I know a struggle <laughs> for you was getting out that piece and it happened way longer after the video was released. So how was it for you? The, the struggle is real in terms <laughs> of uh, fighting quality versus quantity. Yeah. So to give a little background, I started uh, the attempt at 365 days of vlogging mm -hmm. last October. So October 1st, I started that. And did pretty well. I made it to maybe like 110, 112 days. And then I just had something had to give. And I was working. I had been to the Creators Offline event at 368. And was that February? Yeah. I think it was February, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, and, you know, I had this big idea for this video that I wanted to make um, called Did Casey Nice That Change Your Life? And so I had this big vision for it. And thought, yeah, I think I think we were all talking afterwards, and everyone's like, "Oh, I'm gonna try to get my video out tomorrow, next week." And I was like, "I think maybe I can do it in two weeks." <laughs> and it took me three, maybe three and a half months to get that video out. Um, but something had to give because I knew that it was a project that that I wanted to put put the time into and get right. And I think that that kind of that explains my whole uh, experience with daily vlogging mm -hmm. is that. I was having, it was this weird situation where being creative every day was was helping my mind to come up with creative ideas, but I could never execute on the on the quality ideas that I that I was having because I was inspired because I was creating every day. So it was like this this bittersweet time, and so the Casey idea was really the first one where I was like, okay, I have to 
I have to just go for this one. I have to take the time and I can't, that means I can't put out a daily video and that's, that's going to have to be okay. Like I said, I think the struggle is real there where you, <laughs> at least for myself, when I, when I went daily for a month, I, I, I had the same exact opinion of, man, it just feels great. Like your creativity just goes <laughs> and you, you start coming out with all this kind of content that you never would have came out with, but the time and implementation of it. I will say when you are doing daily, though, it, it starts that margin starts to get smaller and smaller. You find creative ways to reach your ideas faster. And if something isn't working out, you find some like from A to C as opposed to hitting A, B and C, all gotcha. that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I, the reason I ask is because you released a video right before the Casey video, which was the perfectionism <laughs> trap. And it, like it, it's almost as if you wanted to release a video that was explaining to the world what you were going through yeah. making that Casey video. Is that true? Yes, absolutely. Because <laughs> um, I think by the time I released the perfectionism trap was maybe I was like two weeks behind on daily vlogs because I had been working on this video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was like, okay, maybe I'll get this out soon. So maybe two weeks from now I will have another video released that will explain why. But then it was like months later anyway. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, perfection. And I think daily vlogging was the, the best way to possibly get over perfectionism. And I found over the last six months, not daily vlogging, that I've like slid back into that perfectionism trap. But if anyone is looking to get over that real quick, daily vlog, that's the way to go. <laughs> yeah, daily anything like, uh, I mean, even in podcasting or anything like that, if you set a goal to be consistent because of that consistency goal, you start to obtain a better grasp of your content in general. And especially with this podcast, by coming out with it every Wednesday and like sticking to it, mm -hmm. I'm like so much beyond where I would have been uh, if I was like, oh, I have these guests and like, what happens if I don't have a guest? Then I have to do something. And <laughs> turns out sometimes those are my most downloaded podcasts, which is crazy when you think about yeah. it. But that's, um, uh, what's the phrase? Uh, constraint breeds creativity or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also want to get into your effort that you put into that video because I, I helped you film <laughs> some of it. And we were actually yes. talking on the way here that it was almost like... I think if you looked at the degrees, it was negative something, but yeah. that wasn't taking into account the windshield. Yeah. And when I was helping you film, we were out by Dumbo. And for those that don't know, we were underneath a bridge and you're just all willy nilly right by the rocks, water coming up. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, Alex has to get the shot, but I'm so freezing cold. Like she's really dedicated to getting the shot. And I'm like, yep. I'm just trying to get B-roll of you, but not shake the camera. Yep. <laughs> uh, yep. Can you go into everything that you did to accomplish that video because it was it was an amazing video <laughs> <laughs> thank you yeah it was a long process I think I mean it's really hard to explain idea creation and like how long that take how long it actually takes right because once you actually have that moment where you have the idea maybe I'd been thinking about it for a month or something you know mm -hmm. um well, maybe not because I don't know that I knew a month and maybe I knew right at a month in advance that I was actually going to be at that event. So, you know, from that moment that I knew I was going, I, I said, I have to do something really cool. I'm there. Right. I've never been to New York. It's going to be fun. Um, so once I had the idea, I know that I spent probably 20 hours like planning the story, I guess, and just planning out ideas. And then, of course, there was the screenshotting of Casey's videos and mm -hmm. finding oh my gosh, yeah. locations. And I didn't even take into account all of the back end that you pre -production, had to do to, basically. to print out the photos themselves. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, just like sifting through all of Casey's like backlog or not backlog, but um For those that don't know, of, if, you, if you haven't seen the video, what she did uh, throughout most of the video, she took photos of were they thumbnails or were they actual Some frames? Some were thumbnails, but most were frames yeah, in, the, were, in the videos. They were frames from... Uh, different Casey Neistat videos and she went to the places where Casey was took the photo but in some cases like I think in one of them there was a whole bulldozer or a digger like right in front of it and like you did it in such a way that you put the photo in front of the digger so you could still take the photo but you had to get into some really uh, awkward like positions just to take the right photo yeah it was quite the I, I stand by that that is the most amazing way to explore a new city is just like it's yeah. just to have like a mission like that it was so much fun um yeah but it was it was complex it was definitely difficult and there was actually an instagram account that goes around the world and finds hollywood locations and takes photos of the locations like that so were you, that's were you inspired by that's that? where i got the idea for that part of the video um and i'm 
constantly like I still see them on my Instagram feed and I'm just like how are you guys doing this because I did it for three days and I almost died like it was <laughs> so difficult because yeah. there's you know you're trying to match the lens that he used and you don't know what lens what you know millimeter he's at um but yeah so that was a really fun aspect of that video to be able to ask other creators like yourself to meet me out in New York and help me track down these weird locations. And everyone's like, what are you even doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and I have to give a huge shout out to Gabriel DeSanti because he found at least half of those locations for me because he had done work with uh, Dan Mace. That Collabing. Summer. Yeah, so that was a huge help. Um, but in terms of, yeah, the amount of work that goes into a video like that, I mean, I spent three, three and a half months on it post-production and just you know, finding the story and, and seeing what you have and sifting through that footage from five days in New York, right? And then like sitting down and interviewing yourself and, and just piecing the story together and then trying to make it can you, appealing. <laughs> can you explain pre-production? Not necessarily for that video, but even if it's a client project, what goes through your head? Because um, I know you're very organized when it comes to shot lists and other things, like making mm -hmm. sure you get the things that you need to just mm -hmm. breed it over years and years of experience. And I, I know it didn't start out that way. And <laughs> like you even have videos of you reviewing your very first video, right. but what goes through your head now that could help other creators out there when it comes to any idea that they want to get from head to, I was gonna say head, shoulder, sees a toast, but from, <laughs> from head into screen. My pre-production process can vary so much. Yeah, based on almost like the budget of the project, right? But I'd say the most important piece to pre-production is is having an idea of your story before you shoot um at least for me i always try to have an idea of of how i'm going to piece this together and some people think in terms of like visually what what's your shot list i don't usually have a shot list um, unless it's like a project where we're storyboarding and i have like more of a team um but yeah just knowing what that story is going to be having a having a larger vision before you shoot i think is the most important part and it's something that i lacked for a while before i had that realization that that's because that's what's driving the video mm -hmm. right that's what's gonna that's what's gonna keep your audience watching um is story and emotion how about a specific object spe specific action mm -hmm. wide shot mid shot like what what goes through your head um when you need coverage of a scene mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like really making it. No, these are great questions. <laughs> these are things like where you don't even realize um, what you're doing. You don't recognize your own superpower and knowing what you need to get. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'd say in terms of like actually knowing how to shoot a scene is just get as many angles as you can. Multiple angles is usually the thing that that makes something look less amateur. So if you just got one angle on one scene, and that's going to make it look like a more amateur project mm -hmm. versus, I mean, Hollywood films, minimum, it's six angles, right? On just a simple one minute scene of dialogue, they're going to have six camera angles on that, right? And that can range anywhere, you know, up to 100 for an action scene. So um, if you're if you're wanting to make something look cinematic, be engaging to the audience, I'd just say multiple angles. Yeah. yeah. Favorite shot that you've had recently where you're just like, this is a banger. Oh my gosh. Um, I just did for another series that I'm working on for my channel. I uh, had my friend Jake Fru out. He was, he's a uh, new full-time van lifer and he was uh, staying here for about a week and got some good bangers in there. <laughs> <laughs> for the audience that doesn't know, could you explain it, what a banger is? <laughs> um, it's just something that, uh, how do you explain what I, a banger is? I just want to see what you um, call it. Just like this rad shot that you're, you get really pumped on when you see it back, right? When you play it back and you're like, fuck yeah. <laughs> Before we came over, we were watching a Mango Street video and they use the term shutter butter where you you have a shutter <laughs> speed um, cranked and you do slow-mo and it's buttery footage. Mm -hmm. So how's it today? Like where, I because I, I know you've been creating for a long time. How is it, how do you see your trans, uh, I don't know, your transgression or how, how you've been from where you started YouTube to where you're at today. Cause I remember mm. 
when we were shooting the Casey video and um, I was interviewing you, it was about stuff. You're just like, yeah, you're like, if you look back at my back catalog, there's just like, <laughs> I don't know what I would show you. Cause I was like asking you like, oh, what should I ask you about? Oh, I think uh, you asked what my favorite videos. Of my, you can come up YouTube, with one. Like, None. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, yeah. after, after you release the Casey video, you're like, yeah, I have one. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. <laughs> how, like, I, I think a lot of creators can relate to that though, where you just, when you're in the thick of things, you just don't know where you're at. And I love the journey throughout all of the creation. And if I were to go back and look at my own stuff in the beginning, there's still some things where like creativity wise, I was like, I don't even think I could have thought of that again, just mm -hmm. because of the constraints. Maybe I only had a cell phone or something like that. But in terms of your journey from then to now, where would you say you've been? And like, how do you, I don't know, you appreciate where you've come from? I don't go back and look at my videos very often. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as far as my, my journey on YouTube as a creator, I think what I'm most proud of is where I am now and where I you know, when I record or when I turn the camera on, even though I'm not daily vlogging, when I do turn the camera on, I don't find that there's this lack of comfort in front of the camera, even though I'm not doing it anymore every day. Yeah. Um, and that was, that's a huge, huge step for me. Um, Cause turning that camera on initially was probably the hardest thing I've ever done. I think a lot of people done. can relate to that for sure. Yeah, so just like looking back on those videos, I'm like very proud of that person for even just doing it because I'm only, here right now because she did you know yeah um i don't really know if that answers your question but um yeah i'm just very proud of that of that journey and would would encourage anyone to take part in that even if this isn't a long-term goal even if you don't want to be a content creator it's it's like public speaking i mean it's just and doing it often and and speaking to no one and everyone at the same time is is huge for just self-development and and confidence so yeah, I'm just, I, I love that journey. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've been asking this question a lot during the <clears throat> podcast. What has been your best investment in the last year? And it can be personal. It can be business. It can be anything. My best investment was either just time and commitment to doing that and doing YouTube or the flight and hotel to New York in February. Oh, wow. Like, yeah, I'd say... Maybe maybe that one. Just just straight up making the decision to yeah. go out there and yeah. and uh do it. That's a very good um it's like tying everything together, like making that one piece of content and like proving to yourself that you could put that thing out there. Right. And uh, in hindsight, I'm curious what what is your uh opinion now on content for quality versus quantity in regard to your experience? I think they both serve different purposes. I have no regrets for going daily for 110 yeah, yeah. days or whatever. Um, I enjoy quality content that I can take weeks on more so and like have more of a planned out situation and collaborate with people because that's really what I'm on the platform to do is to collaborate with people um, and build relationships with with creators really. But... I mean, even as even as someone who consumes YouTube, like daily, I love watching daily <laughs> vlogs. Yeah. You know, um, that's like that's why I decided to to daily vlog because you know Casey Neistat. But then, like, I really ultimately decided that because Cody Warner was so entertaining and I loved watching his videos at the time. So, it's not like it's not like I have this idea that I only want to watch quality content. So I think both have their place on the platform for sure. Yeah, I remember. And and quality doesn't always mean like high production value either. I mean, story and just engaging your audience can be done with an iPhone and, mm -hmm. you know, crappy audio sometimes, so. Yeah, uh, I, I remember I was sitting in my edit bay at the Tribe and uh, perusing the YouTubes and then <laughs> Cody had one of his, his jumping videos where he's just like, what's up? And I was like, who is this guy doing all this energy? And then I just got trapped into a whole, like, whatever span of Cody. watching. Yeah hole <laughs> exactly <laughs> he's here right now in the audience but <laughs> but i but i will say is it was, it's um live there, studio audience yeah there's a certain degree of inspiration that you can draw upon from that and then uh create your own thing which gets to one of the things that i'm obsessed with is like the snowball effect have you ha mm -hmm. seen any direct effect from the content that you've created with other people that you've inspired from what you've done i can't say that i've 
seen it, but people have commented it. That, yeah, I mean, that's right. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, it's not like I've been able to follow up with, you know, a, a <laughs> Did you create a video yesterday because of the video I made? I saw yeah. on the Casey video you commented that I inspired you to make videos today. Did you? <laughs> you know, I haven't yeah. followed up, but yeah, there were it was a surprising number of comments on the Casey video and then also on a video that I released recently that was called uh, Being on YouTube is Weird. Um, those are probably the two videos that people have commented that that I inspired them to get back into creating or create something that day or whatever, whatever you have. Yeah, that re reminds me of the other one that you posted recently. And I had Mark on of uh, Invisible People. Do mm -hmm. you know him? Yeah, yeah I so, just saw I just saw you posted that. Uh, so he said during his podcast, uh, authenticity trumps production value. Mm -hmm. And for his content all he does is set up a camera and interview a homeless person yep. for however long he can do it and man a lot of his stuff is some tear jerkers but it's so authentic mm -hmm. and can you tell the audience about how authenticity is in your channel because i know you just um, posted a video about it and I, I loved your message in it yeah i think i think authenticity is a real buzzword and sometimes it's hard to really understand what that means um, when we're saying it in a conversation or when you're trying to figure out what that means for you if you are a content creator. I think I'm still constantly figuring that out. But um, yeah, so in that recent video, I, I looked back on, I think, like my first YouTube series, which was a crowdfunding for film series while I was crowdfunding my, fir my first short film. And um, it's like jarring to like watch it because I'm like trying to be really high energy and and I'm just what's up Mercedes like, not being Mercedes exactly here. <laughs> like that's picture Alex doing that and I'm like holy shit like what was I doing but <laughs> yeah. it was like I was trying to find my voice and I think you can only find your authentic voice in front of a camera at least because it is so in your face and it's so different from what we're used to you can only find your authenticity by practice and and by getting to the point where you're where you're comfortable and confident to to be in front of an audience and be actually yourself i i actually always think about um one of my daily vlogs i was incredibly sick i was just sick as a dog man i was just like <laughs> i crawled out of bed got out to my studio i think it was thanksgiving and and i just laid on the floor and just recorded my vlog. <laughs> like of you like on the a, floor? It was like a one minute vlog of me talking to the camera about something. And I was like, I'm so sick. This is so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> That's dedication though. <laughs> yeah. And, and, but I was just like, I had no energy to like not be myself. And then um, my friend Adrian Ritchie commented and was like, I think this is the most you we have ever seen on camera. And I love it. And I just remember that because it's like, just like, that was me raw. Right. Mm -hmm. And so just but you have to find that comfort in in being yourself, because I think we all struggle with that every day of just being comfortable being our true self in front of other humans. So, yeah, you just got deep metaphoric on the podcast <laughs> there. <laughs> uh, I, the I, I yeah, I think it's so true. I think there's also a a little bit, too, of energy that needs to be brought because of and what I mean is energy that needs to be brought above the level where you think you are portraying on camera. Yeah. Because uh, at least when I get back into the edit, I look back and if I wasn't so energetic and I wasn't really projecting myself at the camera, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm like, like throwing myself at the camera, but like, not like <laughs> that. But if you don't overdo it just a little bit, yeah. it doesn't come across on the camera. Would you yeah. agree? Yes. There's, you have to find that like medium. You have to find that level and and play with it until it's like yeah that's me it's maybe me just a little bit more energy but it's still me right um because you i mean youtube is is a tough game as well so you have mm -hmm. to be engaging i mean you want to entertain your audience and and keep them watching so yeah you can't be dull but you can yeah. be yourself i sure. think adrian the other creator that you brought up she's been on the podcast but uh <laughs> i think she does a really good job at it i think the peak of somebody just doing a amazing talking head video is Roberto Blake mm -hmm. and just how he can make a 30 minute video and just sit there and talk. And I'm like, I'm hanging but on he, every but single he word. Has a lot of like, uh, but he has a lot of energy when you talk to him in person, you mm -hmm. know, he's just got like, um, 
I don't know if you want to call it a flair. Like he just is. I would also say like Gerald Undone. Yeah, yeah. Is like very just like, and he, I don't think he even puts like music in his, in his like tutorials and stuff mm-hmm. and reviews. And he's just like so straightforward and you're still just like, yes, I got, you know, I want to hear everything you're saying. Right. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, favorite creators other than yourself right now. Definitely myself. <laughs> um, Becky and Chris all day, every day, man. Also talk about authenticity. Yeah, they them. knock it out of the park. Mm-hmm. I just love watching them. They're so engaging. Becky's just an incredible storyteller. Um, gosh, I love Method Box stuff. <laughs> if they ever, if they ever upload, you know, <laughs> they're, they're also here. <laughs> Always waiting for their uploads. Um, yeah, no. Uh, I haven't been watching YouTube as much because I've been traveling since July, but it's been. Can you can you talk about crazy. that too? Because yeah. uh, I was actually just talking to Cody about this. Um, do you have an inkling in the back of your head or so? Like for me, it's like in my gut. If I haven't posted something for at least three days, I, oh, wow. I, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like I want to like like I want to hit that upload button. Um, and part of that comes from. A, a history on my channel of going back to consistency. When I when I made a effort to consistently post, that's where the videos that blew up the most. It was just because I was constrained by creativity. Like I have to get a video out, and like and those videos are the ones that like did the best. And it's kind of backwards sometimes that those are the ones that took the least amount of production value. And then, but sometimes I think coming back to authenticity that maybe those were the most authentic just because I had to do something and there was like, here, like, here's this thing. them out. Yeah, like you're just yeah. rolling with it, right? Yeah. And so how, how does that, how does it feel for you when like it, you haven't posted something for X amount of time? Um, well, that's happened a lot over the last few months and it does. I think you, you kind of lose, if you say I've gone without a month without posting, it feels really crappy. Like, <laughs> I don't mean it as a knock. No, 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 no. I mean, no, I, I uploaded two weeks ago. Come on now. No, but if in the last five months I've had a month where I didn't post, it feels like shit. <laughs> and you're just like, crap, I need to get on there. I need to get on there. And then you have like 10 videos that I've shot, but it's going to take too long to edit it for me to get it up in the next three days or whatever. So it's like, okay, what's my new idea? All right, let's shoot it and get it up. It's It's stressful, but I think when you go a month without doing it, you almost like forget about that gut feeling that you're uh, talking about you. without the three days. For me, it's more of when you do finally hit upload, you remember how good that feels, mm-hmm. right? So it's not necessarily always like the negative motivation for me, but like I want to hit that upload button, again, <laughs> yeah. you know? It's like that feels that feels awesome and it feels like you've accomplished something. Um, yeah, yeah, it's I really I don't even think feeling. about that. I think it's the what you just said accomplishment i think it's the sense of accomplishment oh my gosh yeah like for me even just like even talking about this it's the idea of putting something out into the world and if i haven't put it out and i haven't hit upload there was a meme that i saw recently where it had four squares and the first square was coming up with a great idea like the ideation of it Next mm-hmm. one was um like recording it or something like that next one was editing it or like trying to um, implement it and then there the arrow goes from that third box all the way around the fourth one <laughs> of actually finishing a project or hitting upload or whatever that is and going back to coming up with some banger ideas but yep. never finishing anything so yep. I think it's that idea to me at least of even if this isn't perfect I know I want to move on to the next thing and mm-hmm. I keep wanting to throw myself into situations that are going to make me uneasy and all of that other stuff so it's more of that like I guess thrill or like I like have to keep doing have to keep doing yep but I mean at the same time is that like does that lead to burnout and all that other stuff I don't know I do not know um time will tell yeah and it also lends itself I think to the good competitiveness of Mm -hmm. YouTube Mm -hmm. like obviously like we're all friends as creators but it's just like it's nice to be like oh man they just released a quote unquote banger video yeah. like i want to get up to that level and yep. all that kind of stuff like how do you how do you think about that oh i think it's when i need motivation or inspiration to even if i've already shot the video just to edit a video that i shot a month ago that i'm already like way over i'm like i don't even want to edit that right now 
I just watch like some of my favorite creators, right? And it's like, yeah, they just <laughs> crushed that video. Yeah, yeah. Like I wanna I wanna do something awesome like that. So I think it's such a fun space to be a part of because it is slightly competitive, but it's such a wide open space. There's plenty to go around and we all get to just inspire each other and and keep rolling with it. But I think what you said earlier about um the Shoot, what did you say? You said the perfectionism of it. That's one of my favorite things about YouTube is to help me not not succumb to that perfectionism because I have that I have that mentality. So, for instance, the first feature documentary I made, I made I started it in college and it was like my thesis project or whatever. Um, but I have like this weird this weird urge probably once a month to like go back and redo it like it's been <laughs> finished for like four years because it had to be because I had a kickstarter and like had to deliver whatever but um you know you watch it now and you're like oh my god this could be so much better maybe I should just maybe I should just fix it a little bit <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah. like no it's done right and that's the same thing with every YouTube video like these are things these are ideas that would probably just sit on a hard drive forever unseen if it weren't for YouTube and if it weren't for that upload button right I think that's the most beautiful part of the whole platform in my mind. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> you know, per personally, just being here, and this happened in New York too, when I was, uh, when you're just surrounded by so many creative people, you just get, there's like this dopamine dump that just like, oh, I want to create, 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 create. <laughs> it's so awesome to be surrounded by so many amazing individuals. Mm. Like just, um, like saying like, well, I was just talking to Cody. I was just talking to like uh, Method Box and everything. But he brought up, um, I, I brought up going to Italy and there's five vlogs that I have not made from this Italy trip. Mm -hmm. That's just like what you're talking about. Sitting it's there. been on my hard drive for like a year. <laughs> and I brought an extra hard drive to back up all the podcasts that I have here. And it just turns out that those five extra vlogs are on that backup <laughs> hard drive. And I started like looking through the footage, just like, man, this is some cool footage. Yeah. But being here, I'm like, man, I want to like, I want to make this thing now. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe that's what it takes. The um, just being surrounded by so many people, you get the osmosis of like, mm -hmm energy flow i don't even know what yeah. that's called but just I, drawing yeah. in the energy yeah it's when you think about we think about how other people get things done other non-solo entrepreneurs or creative entrepreneurs people that work in regular jobs mm -hmm. they have an entire team usually surrounding them you're working in small groups you're working with a team and you all draw energy from each other you hold each other accountable you're doing all these things it's like that's something that we do not have as usual solo creative entrepreneurs right um we don't have colleagues and so as as long as often as we can draw energy from each other i think that's going to benefit everyone because that's i think that's how humans are meant to function so it's a bit unfortunate that we're all not like on a college campus together just doing youtube could like you imagine <laughs> if like everybody was in that close proximity oh my god oh my gosh it's like we'd either get everything done or nothing done I don't know which one, I think, but I think there'd be so many quote unquote bangers. I think we get a lot. We'd be making some bangers and mash. A lot. <laughs> Let's start to wrap it up. Two questions I ask at the end of each podcast. Why do you do what you do? Yeah, I should have prepared this. I know you always ask this question. <laughs> um, why do I do what I do? I mean, I think that's um, it's kind of a loaded question because I do a lot of things at this point in my life. Um, I still do a ton of client work. I'm pursuing, you know, YouTube and personal branding, but I'm also building a software company. So I'm going to answer this from the software. No, because we've been talking about YouTube. Um, okay, I got it. I've got this. I guess I consider myself um, in, some, in some parts of my life an impact filmmaker. Um, and I do that because... I know that storytelling is the most powerful way to get a message across. It's, I guess, the only way to get a message across. And, and visual storytelling is the most powerful, I guess, is what I would say. And there's just so much in the world that um, needs improving. And, and I want to be a part of that solution. So I guess that's why I do what I do. Yeah. And whenever I ask this question, I, I always like to stress that I feel like you don't have to have something set in stone. I've, for sure. I've, like for, for me, at least, 
I'll I'll think of that question as when you go to a cocktail party and somebody mm-hmm. asks you, what do you do for a living? Yeah. And sometimes you could be like, I'm a YouTuber or I'm a video editor or yeah. I like you gauge the situation. You cater and then, it to the event you're at, right? Yeah, ex- exactly. <laughs> and the reason I bring that up is because it's more about day to day like oh like you can you can switch your why Mm -hmm. but like i feel like there's still in and of itself who you are as a person can transgress like from day to day and can be a through line throughout for sure but like maybe why i did what i did today is because i had to pay the bills you know like like like, (laughs) legitimately like i had bills coming up and i needed some money so yeah yeah, like that whole thing for sure um but yeah I, i in your content in general it's i love what you do just from the content creation side, but you're also creating to create an impact, a mm-hmm. positive one, which is awesome. Other one I always ask at the end of each podcast, which I feel like I've probably asked you this on the other times I've interviewed you, <laughs> but to get from, let's say, the very first upload that you ever did to YouTube to where you're at today, what are, what's some advice that you could give to mm-hmm. some creators? Relentlessly practice. Love that. Um, yeah, that's that's it. That's all I have. Super simple, <laughs> but that's like, it kind of sums up what we were talking about. Yeah. If people wanted to find you, mm-hmm. where would they go? Um, yeah, my YouTube is Alex Gassaway, G-A-S-A-W-A-Y. I'm sure you'll put it in the show notes. Mm-hmm. And um, Instagram and Twitter. Um, Instagram is Alex Gassaway and Twitter is I am Alex Gassaway. She's doing some awesome things on all the platforms. You should check her out. Dope. And... If you wanted to share this out with a friend, it would be awesome if you did, but it would be even cooler if you were to take out a pen and paper in a parcel and write <laughs> down the the link to this podcast and send it to one of your relatives and say, hey, you should check out this <laughs> podcast. I'm going to keep saying that at the end of every single one of my podcasts until somebody does it. And you could tag me in that at Javier Mercedes X, and I will be so happy for that day. Epic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, until next episode, thank you so much for your time and inviting us into your home. I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Thanks for having me.